Um, so the term robot is generally defined as a, a machine capable of carrying out a series of complex actions generally automatically and programmed by a computer. Now when we think of robots, we generally think of something very rigid, metal, uh, heavy, that doesn't interact closely with humans. The classic example being um, uh, in an assembly line, there are actual metal cages that protect humans from these uh, robots that are capable of applying high forces. So it's <laughs> a physical barrier between robot and humans. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so the thing is, robot. the field of robotics is sort of heading in a new direction with this idea of soft robots. So what they are are non-rigid um, robots that are made of uh, materials such as elastomeres, uh, fibers, and other filler materials, for example, silicon. And so what these robots allow is for an intimate and delicate interaction between robot and human. For example, the properties of these robots are able to match. Good morning. Malcolm Fields, please go to Dr. Torres' office. All right, so basically, uh, the, ro the materials of the robot are able to match biological tissues and even mimic their functions. So when we think of robots, especially in um, biomechanics, an actuator is the piece of structure that's responsible for the movement. So you can all remember that actuator is responsible for movement. So my paper is called Soft Robotic Sleeve Supports Heart Function, which I think is pretty simple enough already. So heart failure is the inability of the heart to pump sufficient blood to the body. And throughout the world, there are 41 million people who have heart failure, with 5.7 million in the US alone. So each year, it costs us about $32 billion. Um, and so heart failure, as I said before, is the inability of the heart to pump sufficient blood. So when this happens, there's not much that you can do um, besides get on the transplant list and hope for a heart transplant. And the problem is, as I'm sure many of you know, there's very limited donor availability. And people often die on the transplant list waiting for their heart transplant. Um, and they're only about 2,100 a year. So as you might be able to tell there's a clear need for some sort of mechanism that can help you to extend your life if you have heart failure. So currently, um, there are ventricular assist devices out there that are used to prolong life. And what they do is they pump blood from your left and right ventricles into the aorta and pulmonary artery. So it's basically, as you can see, they're like a tube that's pumping the blood for you and it's assuming the function of one or two of your failing ventricles. Now the problem with these devices though is that um, because it's a tube, the blood is contacting an artificial surface, and what this does is increases your risk of blood clotting, which can lead to some serious, serious problems. So patients with this VAD um, are forced to go on lifelong uh, medications for blood thinning to prevent the blood clotting. So the problem with this is not only expensive to take a medication for the rest of your life, but also um, there's still a 20% um, patients with this VAD um, experience uh, event, ex, uh, blood clotting events such as strokes, like 20% of the patients experience them. And also, they don't having such a thing on the heart um, causes it to kind of alter the curvature of the heart, which can be uh, more of a problem and reduce the biomimicry. So what the, the plan of this paper, the goal of the paper, is to create a device that can support the heart function and augment it <clears throat> so that it um, contracts accurately. Uh, so as you can see in the, this right here, the heart has cardiac muscles <clears throat> that are organized uh, or oriented in a helical and circumferential pattern. So basically, there are fibers that run this way and this way. And together, they compress and contract and twist so that creating the cardiac cycle. So the idea of this paper is to model a sleeve that goes around the heart to augment its function that's oriented in a similar um, orientation. So does anyone remember what I said an actuator was? Yes. It's the thing that is responsible for movement? Yeah. So in this case, the actuator is called a PAM, which is a pneumatic artificial muscle. So basically, there are these tubes that are um, tethered to a pump, an external pump, that basically provides the movement. So they oriented these PAMs in an orientation that mimics that of the cardiac, the native heart. 
So basically, they had uh, circumferential actuators or PAMs and helical ones. So those PAMs were then embedded in a silicon sleeve that was, could mimic um, the properties of the natural heart tissue. So this is not that important, but there are basically two designs um, that they used, design one and design two, and I'm going to talk about them throughout the paper, but one had multiple layers, and you don't really need to know the specifics, but they ended up using the second one. So this whole thing is controlled by this huge system that looks very complex, but basically um, what it did is programs the sleeve and also monitors and records the heart performance. So what's really cool though is that it's able to implement a time sequence, like say you wanted to actuate specific actuators in a sequence, it's able to do that. Because with heart failure, there are certain um, kinds of it, like one that's more left ventricle oriented or right ventricle, and so what this is able to do is implement a time scheme so you can actuate the ones that, you're, that you want to. So it's very customizable to a specific patient, which is really, really cool because it's disease specific. And as I said before, this thing can also monitor things like heart rate and blood pressure. So what they wanted to do is test, oh, right here, this also just shows uh, the sleeve in, uh, surrounding a heart. So the first thing they did was test a simplified model of this in vitro. So um, they created a simplified design made of silicon with one ventricle, which is just the tube. So basically they're trying to show fluid displacement, which represents the heart pumping blood. So they measured here, this first three used design one, and they um, actuated circumferential twisting actuators and both combined. And what they found is that when they actuated both at the same time, um, more fluid was displaced, 50 milliliters was displaced versus the 38 and 22 of the singularly actuated um, models. And so then they, actu they used the second design and they tried placing the circumferential versus the twisting on the outside, so just to see which one worked better externally. And what they found is that the circumferential actuators um, were able to displace more fluid when placed externally, which was about 84 milliliters. And also just looking at comparing these three with this, these two, which were the designs one versus two, the design two seemed to um, overall displace more fluid. So, also, they just wanted to check really quickly how, if they changed the pressure from the machine, uh, how it would affect the volume displaced. And as you can see, with increasing pressure, more fluid was displaced, which also just shows how they're able to like, control from that system what they're doing. So then they did another simplified model with two ventricles, as you can see. And what they do is they selectively actuated the PAMs um, on either the left or right side. And what they found was, to, uh, depending on which side they were actuating, they were able to displace more fluid. So as I said before, say you had heart failure that was more on the left side, then you could actuate actuators on your left, the left side of your heart, so that that was pumping more blood. So this is just a cool image of how it was working. Um, you can see it's like pumping and the fluid's being displaced. Um, so then they, what they wanted to do is they had seen that this worked in vitro, so they wanted to put it in a pig model to see if it would work. So they um, <laughs> euthanized pigs, so they're no longer alive, but basically what they're testing is whether it's able to pump, kind of work in a body and send blood flowing around. So they put around the pig and then they, this is with design one again, and they actuated simultaneously and sequentially. So they did this sequence where basically they'd actuate this one and then those three, like kind of a sequence. Um, and they compared them and saw it was pretty similar, but um, achieving an aortic flow of about four liters per minute. And then they did the same thing with design two, um, independent both circumferential alone, twisting alone, and the two combined. And if you can see, I know it's really hard to tell, but there are three different lines but the highest aortic flow was achieved when using both the circumferential and twisting together. Um, so that shows that that's the most effect, more effective. And also comparing to the previous one, it had a higher um, aortic flow rate, which is about peaking about eight liters per minute. Yes. Um, what, how does this compare to the aortic flow rate of a functioning Um I'm not entirely sure, but it'll show you more uh, in later data, I'll show you that. Um, so this is just a similar thing, it just shows it's pumping. Um, are there any other questions before I go on? 
Yeah. Right. So they used a variety of things. Like there's some. If you, they use suction and like tethering <coughs> materials. Um, I'm not entirely. Like they they went into it a little bit, but basically it was a te it's a temporary thing because this is only a first round study. But they used a variety of different materials to like attach it to the heart, and they also developed like a hydrogel to go between the two to kind of reduce friction, which um, I'll talk about a little bit later. But so, any other questions? Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, are there wires being attached to this heart sleeve to like gather all this data? Um, yeah. So if you can see here, there's like. These um, PAMs are attached to these flow the external pump, and I think those are also attached to the big computer system. So, like a natural body, would they have like wireless signaling to control it? Um, I'm not entirely sure. This is very like first round. They have to figure out how it actually be implemented in a human body, of course. But uh, I can get back to you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So, um, I know that. The whole idea of this is to try this in a heart failure, but what they first wanted to do is see if this would able to uh, would be able to restore heart function in a pig with cardiac asystole. So what that is is they induce cardiac arrest, so it flatlined. So basically, what this shows is the normal flow, which I think you were asking about before, versus um, the cardiac asystole, and then the when the ventricular assist device was turned on. So basically, what this shows is the as I just said, normal. Uh, aortic flow versus cardiac asystole and the device. And what this showed is in design one, that was able to achieve a 48% restoration of cardiac output, which is okay. But then they tried it with design two, and as once again, they're the representative trials, and they were able to achieve an 88% restoration of cardiac output. So it's pretty much going, um, it's augmenting the function of the heart and kind of bringing it back to a normal <coughs> um, levels. Any questions? So then, um, what they wanted to do is, of course, oh yes, question. Does flow go negative at some point? How does that work? Does it just flow back in, or? Um, I mean, I think, yeah, normal uh, EKG cycle, there are like the ups and downs, and I think it's like representing the uh, beats. I'm not entirely sure, though. Yeah? It's atrial reflow. It's atrial okay. reflow. Right, right. So it's, blood going in and out, kind of. Um, so then in the acutely, so now they were trying this on heart failure, pigs with acute failing heart. So again, they took the uh, baseline uh, heart measures, then once the pig had, they induced the heart failure, by, um, and then finally they turned on the device. And so what they were able to find is that the aortic flow was fully reestablished, and in addition, the cardiac output um, was recovered to 97% of the baseline. Which is really cool. What this is showing is that it's a, this device is able to augment the heart function when it's failing. So that's a pretty big deal. And then, so basically, what this paper was able to show is the heart sleeve was able to um, bring recovery of cardiac output in a pig model, and it was very customizable and conformable to the native heart. What the ultimate the design two actually does is they laminated the silicon and put the embedded the pans in it and are able to actually wrap it around the heart so that it fits really nicely. It's very conformable and you can customize the sequence of actuation. Um, and it's able to restore the cardiac function without contacting the blood like previous VADs did. Um, in addition, as I said, it mimics the native motion and uh, can provide support customizable one ventricle or two. Um, and it's able to extend the life of a patient with heart failure, or hopefully is able to in humans. But as I've said before, this is a very phase one study, so it came with a lot of future questions and like limitations. Of course, this was done in um, a very huge system, as you can remember, the big computer system. But the ultimate goal is being able to have some sort of pocket device or implantable thing in your body that, so that you can live your daily life with such a device. In addition, of course, this was done in a small scale pig study, and they need to do something, obviously, with maybe a bigger pig study or eventually with humans. Um, and as I said to you before, the, the actual, um, how they put the, attach it to the heart, which is the bioadhesive component, they need to look into a more um, a way of doing this that would be able to, like, a human would able to ha be able to have that in their heart for a long time. Um, also, the hydrogel, they need to, that's, I sort of mentioned that too, just see if that's actually effective and it, 
how that would affect long-term efficacy, and just whether the materials themselves are able to like um, work with the human body. So obviously a lot of work needs to be done, but overall this was only a baseline study. They wanted, it did what it was supposed to do, which is confirm the feasibility of having some sort of device like this. So it's a really big deal, and it shows that the heart sleeve is able to provide that support to a failing heart. So that's all. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Were they able to put the sleeve on before the heart went into cardiac arrest and then start it? Like, could you put this on as like a preventative measure? Um, yeah, I mean, that's. I don't think that's really the goal, like to prevent it, because, I mean, if you don't need it, then you wouldn't want to have so something on your heart like that. Um, but I think they put it on, like, before they induce the cardiac arrest. Uh, you may have addressed this already, in which case I apologize, but did they uh, contemplate the, the need to sync up the contractions of the sleeve with the contractions of the actual heart? Yeah, that's the, that was the whole like goal of this. Basically, they wanted to have it, they wanted it to be able to mimic the normal heart function, so it's synced with the native one, basically. So, so how did they get the, the syncopation correct with the pacemaker? Um, they had they did have like a pacemaker to do that with the big system. Like the whole machine, they basically programmed it to sync with the native heart. I don't know how they programmed it, but they did. <laughs> I think there were like probes in the um, blood, sort of, that were kind of sending information back or something. Yeah. They mentioned any issues about that. Yeah, basically what they did with the hydrogel is they developed it just to see, the, basically they didn't have any issues with friction, but they said, oh, maybe in the long term there will be issues with friction, so we're just going to test this hydrogel to see if it'll do anything. But they didn't like, see anything in the study so far. <laughs> Thank you.